So how each stakeholder might react to this proposal ultimately depends on a variety of factors. Let's look uh, at, each, uh, at each class here or each uh, provider of capital. So the first lien lenders, the loan remains fully intact. It'll, they'll probably be happy unless they believe the restructuring wasn't sufficient and just kicks the can down the road. So if they're worried that what this means is that the company's not necessarily a going concern, this is an important consideration. You know, first lien seems on paper to be very happy because they got everything that they wanted, but there's still, they're still now outstanding debt, debt that the company has to service. If for whatever reason, lenders in a restructuring like this, the, first, the secured lenders feel like, hey, you know what, this company really isn't set up to be a going concern. They're, they're sort of set up for failure here for whatever reason, and this happens sometimes where there's that perception by the priority lenders where the unsecured guys wanna let it ride, but the, the priority guys just want their money back. Uh, they might say, you know, maybe, maybe we just wanna liquidate and we want the money now. We don't think this sets us up for, for future success. So there's always that possibility, but certainly on paper, it looks like these guys are gonna be happy. Second liens, um, here's what happened. They exchanged a $400,000 claim for 115,000 in debt and a 90 and 95% ownership of the business, which if you believe the market's implied valuation, that represents a 55.3% recovery. Remember, now that we're equity owners, the, the market's perception of what the value of the business is becomes very important for an equity owner. Since the second lien was trading at 50 cents on the dollar, this seems like a slightly better outcome than what the market was factoring. Remember the debt was trading at 50 cents on the dollar. So this is a little bit better, but again, it very much now hinges on whether you want equity, whether you really have to believe that valuation to, to buy into the notion that you got 55.3% recovery because the only hard recovery you got is a debt reinstatement of 115,000 on a $400,000 claim. Let's look at the unsecureds. So let's move on uh, to, to these guys, the notes. So they get a 40 cents uh, on the dollar uh, recovery, which sounds pretty bad, but it's far better than, remember, they were trading at 20 cents on the dollar, right? The debt was trading at 20 cents on the dollar. So if you're holding something on the market, trading at 20 cents on the dollar, all of a sudden they've, um, they're getting 40 cents recovery. Well, that, um, that's actually really good for you because most likely now the, the, the price of that, of that note is going to is go up to reflect the higher recovery. So trade, 40% recovery will probably make them very unhappy. They're not lenders and probably didn't sign up for this kind of thing. You know, usually trade isn't used to this kind of bankruptcy when they, when they lend you, give you terms and lend you or, or provide services for you in exchange for money that you promise to pay. They expect to be paid in full, uh, but it's better than nothing. And the problem is that you're there, the trade folks are probably likely now requiring um, cash on delivery. So they're not gonna extend terms to you anymore. Again, it's out of court, there's no protection. Uh, they're not gonna. They're they're gonna request or require cash if if you want uh, materials to you know sold to you now. They're not, um, which gives them leverage, right? So in an out of court situation, if you want to continue as a going concern, trade always has the leverage of saying, well, you need what we've got. Um, especially vendors that are critical to the business can use that as part of the negotiation strategy to extract uh, better recoveries. And then equity, you get to keep 5% of the company with substantially more equity than, which is substantially more equity than pre-restructuring. Remember, pre-restructuring, the equity was underwater. It was, it was worthless. So, um, so this is better. However, you may still be convinced that the valuation is really low and it's unfair and temporary. So whether or not you're happy, again, depends on whether you think, uh, obviously in our particular example here, we're the ones proposing the plan, so we're gonna be happy with it. But, but ultimately, whatever plans get bandied around, you know, the equity may be unhappy if they think the valuation is too low and that they do deserve something, although that's rare.